Hey Steve here and uh, this video is a tutorial on how to blend four bracketed exposures in Photoshop using luminosity masks. Now we've got these four exposures open in uh, Photoshop already. We've got a light one here on top, we've got a dark one just underneath it, uh, kind of slightly less than the darkest one just beneath that and then we've got like a middle exposure beneath that right at the bottom. So I've ordered them in this order uh, so that we can start with this bottom layer first and then start to blend in bits and pieces from these other exposures as we progress through. So before we actually get started, I'm just going to add a layer mask to each one of these layers. And right, so coming back to this slightly darker exposure, what we're going to be doing is blending the sky from this exposure into this light exposure. So we'll take most of the foreground from this light exposure and then uh, yeah, most of the sky from this one. So the way that we can do that is by first creating a luminosity selection. And I'm gonna use the uh, bright layer for this because um, you know, we wanna isolate the sky and the sky is brightest in this exposure. So if we come into the channels panel, uh, I'll probably, let's inst rather than creating the selection from RGB, let's just have a look at the red, green, and blue channels individually. Uh, because I think, yeah, the red channel has actually got slightly more contrast uh, than the other two. So that's going to give us an even more isolated selection. So to load this as a selection, I'm going to press Command or Control and on the, on the keyboard and then click the red channel. We can see we've got some marching ants there now. And so with that done, I'm just going to click once on RGB to see the color version again. Back over into layers. I'm going to enable this layer here. And I've just realized I should have started with a black layer mask. So let me just deselect uh, the active selection, invert the mask with command or control I, come back and do that again. So I'm just going to press command or control, click on the red channel to load the selection, back over into layers and yeah, we want to take a white brush because now we want to brush the sky in to this, uh, yeah, for, into the layer mask here. So I've got a uh, brush opacity about 40%. I'm just going to brush through the sky here. And that selection is isolating the, uh, the brush strokes into the highlights. Now, one thing to watch out for is uh, just making sure that I also brush into the reflections here to bring some of that darker layer through because we don't want to be the reflection uh, we don't want the reflections to be brighter than the sky so just a little bit of that through there now let's deselect and just see what that's given us so here's the before and here's the after with that uh, the highlights which is mainly the sky blended in from this exposure so let's just have a quick look at the layer mask for this now so option or alt click on the layer mask and we can see there that the sky is mostly white, as is the water, and then some of the reflections in the foreground here. So those are the areas that we've blended this darker exposure in. So we're just going to do a similar thing now with the, uh, the darkest layer. Now we probably don't need to use too much of this layer. I just want to get a little bit more color in the sky with it. So again, I'm going to start by inverting the mask. So Command or Control I again. And now let's grab a highlight selection. Um, all right, let's, let's just hide those two layers so that I can base it off of this brightest exposure again. So Command or Control, click on the red channel, back over into layers. Now let's re-enable these two. And we're gonna hide the marching ants this time. Uh, Command or Control H. White brush is still selected. Probably reduce the brush opacity a bit now. And I'm just going to brush through the sky to get a little bit more of that color coming in. And again, through the water here. So yeah, just to reiterate, if I'm moving a little bit too quickly through some of these steps, then I'll uh, put some links to other videos that take a bit more of a slower methodical approach um, in the video description. But for now, uh, yeah, I'm sort of really doing this one just to uh, just to sort of move through quite quickly for the folks watching who are already well versed in these techniques. Uh, so yeah, that's that's probably enough from this dark layer. 
Now let's have a look at this brightest layer. So we're going to use this one to just lift the shadows a little bit um, because some of the shadows are still very, very dark. So I just want to uh, just lift them a little bit to give us a bit more wiggle room when adding contrast in the next few steps. So let's enable this again and invert the mask. Back over into channels. Now we need to do a bit more work uh, with this one to create the, uh, the shadow isolating selection. Uh, so I'll just run through the steps. So command or control, click on RGB. Now let's save this selection as a new channel, alpha one. Now I need to deselect, command or control D. And now we need to invert this alpha one channel so that it's isolating the shadows rather than the highlights. So let's do that, command or control and I. Whoops, I've <laughs> clicked something uh, that I didn't mean to click. Okay, command or control I. Oh, I've done it again. Oh, <laughs> don't know what my fingers are doing. All right, okay. Last try. Command or control I. There, that done it. So, all right, we can see here now this channel is um, isolating the shadows, but it's not going deep enough into the shadow. So it's basically, you know, because there's so much white here, it's uh, selecting the dark half of the histogram, but we only want to select the, the very darkest parts. So we need to intersect this, um, this channel with itself a few times. So let's first load it as a selection, command or control, click on alpha one. And now on the keyboard, command option shift altogether or control alt shift for Windows users. And I'm just going to click once again on alpha one and again and again. And let's go once more for good measure. And now that if I create a new, uh, a new channel from this selection should give us a much more defined shadows uh, channel slash selection. So that is definitely the case. All right, let's load this now as a new selection. Command or control, click on alpha two. Back on RGB to bring the color version back into view. Over into layers, click on the mask. And again, command or control H to hide the marching ants. And I'm just gonna brush through the shadows, through the darkest parts here, just to lift the shadows a little bit without brightening the, uh, the already bright parts. So just kind of doing this by eye a little bit quickly as well, just for the sake of saving a bit of time in the video. Uh, but I think that looks pretty good. So let's have a look at the mask. So again, we're not, uh, we're not bringing any of the sky through in this because that shadow selection has restricted our brush strokes to only the shadows. Um, and yeah, that's that's just enough to create that even exposure, uh, which is the next. Yeah, th th this is the, uh, the sort of the goal for the second stage of my workflow. The first stage being to import and prepare raw files, which I already did before starting this video. Uh, now, this tutorial is specifically about the exposure blend. So, you know, as far as uh, as far as that is concerned, we've kind of completed that step now. But I will just walk you through quickly uh, some of the other edits that I did when I processed this before to bring the uh, to bring the image to this final processed version here. So I've just got them in this group, which I can enable and disable. So um, yeah, let's move this up a little bit so we can see all the uh, layers when I expand this group, and I'll just turn them all off and just show you one by one what each one of these is doing. So there's some sort of pretty straightforward adjustments here, mostly at this, well, this next stage, because I'm not gonna do any color correction, it's all gonna be about contrast. So we've got the first levels adjustment here, which just adds a bit of contrast. And if you've seen my, uh, yeah, I've got this in multiple videos. And if you wanna download my uh, workflow guide, um, there's a link in the description to that as well, and it's free. Uh, then yeah, you'll see that this is my main method for uh, for adding contrast to an image. So using the levels adjustment and then masking it in or out where you want it to be applied or not. Uh, so just a bit of a sort of darkening effect there, just brushed in, actually brushed out of the shadows, I should say, so that we don't over darken those. 
And then we've got a curves adjustment here, which just, we can see here, the S curves slightly increases the brightness in the highlights. We can see the effect on the sun or the area around where the sun's going to be coming up shortly. Uh, this next one, a very subtle one, just a slight lift of the, uh, well, technically they're still shadows, but I'm just sort of highlighting the edges of these rocks in the foreground. If you can see that as I toggle it off and on. So that's just a very subtle effect. Uh, and then this next adjustment is mainly to just darken this bottom corner and then this bottom corner to a lesser degree, just to make these rocks here in the foreground stand out a bit more. So, you know, the way that I process my images, I like to sort of focus the light around the center. So this, I, I call it a contrast vignette because I'm darkening and reducing the contrast and then brushing it into those uh, areas that I want to sort of draw attention away from. So that's that. Um, and if we can see there, it's just a, a darkening curve and then the black point is just moved up a couple of notches. Uh, and then next we've got a bit of sun haze, which is just a, um, like a color overlay brushed in with the brush. That's all that is quite straightforward really. Uh, so that's just to sort of lighten the, uh, the area around the sun and add a bit of a hazy effect. Uh, next is a, another lightening curve, which I've then just brushed in. You can see roughly there, there's no luminosity masks being used at this stage. Just, just a large soft brush to brighten the area where the light is coming from. And then this one here, we are adding a bit of contrast as well, just again with the levels adjustment and then masking it out of the brightest parts of the sky because if I disable the layer mask now you can see this adjustment with uh, it would otherwise overexpose the uh, the sun so yeah that just masks that out mostly of this from the sky that adds a nice amount of contrast everywhere else this next curves adjustment is again just highlighting around the uh, sun there so just another brightening curve this levels adjustment, again, just highlighting the edges of these rocks to make them stand out and pop a bit more. So there's a bit of contrast being added. Uh, this curves adjustment, I think, is optional. I added it, but then I think I removed it or at least disabled it. Um, so we'll leave that turned off and then come back to it in a minute. But again, that's just brightening the image. I feel like it might be a bit too much now. Um, and then this next adjustment is just an autumn effect layer again i've got videos on that on my channel if you want to check those out how to actually create the autumn effect and then i've just masked it out of the middle because again i think it's a bit yeah it's just very dark in the middle so this is mainly for making the sky pop a little bit more and then just darkening the uh, the foreground as well and the last couple we're coming to now so again just another very subtle brightening effect which is then just pretty roughly been masked out of the uh, sky. And one final adjustment here just to, uh, yeah, I think this is just lifting the shadows. So I think, yeah, the curves adjustment doesn't look like anything's had anything done to it. But if you click just on the uh, black point here, we can see that I've just moved it up by four notches. So, you know, just with the uh, arrow keys on the keyboard you can just click on there to activate it and then move it up or down just to shift the black point up or down so that's just a very subtle adjustment which has then been masked into the shadows and that is it so again let's just see the before and after on that here so this is the before so this is where we got to at the end of blending these exposures and this is the finished product based on the rest of my workflow if you're watching this as a long-term subscriber to my channel, you've probably heard me talk about my workflow before. But if you're new, then uh, click the link in the description below the video and you can go and download my free six-step workflow guide and that will walk you through each of the six stages that I kind of arrange all of the edits and adjustments and tweaks that I uh, perform on my images. Uh, it just shows you how to arrange them into a, an order that makes sense and helps you... Uh, create a bit of consistency in your processing if you follow the same thing. So with that said, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you want to see more like this.